Hi friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Train. Today we are going to discuss about anti-nutritional factors in food. What do you mean by this anti-nutritional factor? The anti-nutritional factors can be defined as those substances generated in natural food substance by the normal metabolism of species and by different other mechanisms which exert effects contrary to optimum nutrition. That is, the anti-nutritional factors are certain substances which are present in foods we eat and these substances prevent us from fully benefiting from the nutrients that the food should provide. These are known as anti-nutritional factors. That are, there are substances which are present in the food we eat. But they prevent uh, from us from fully benefiting from the nutrients that the food should provide. And uh, the... Uh, the anti-nutritional uh, factors are categorized into two, that is thermosensitive and thermostable. Some of the anti-nutritional factors are thermosensitive, that is they are easily degraded at high temperatures which include proteins such as lactins, protease etc. And the thermostable anti-nutritional factors uh, includes polyphenols, non-protein, amino acids and the galactomannan. That is, these are thermostable. That is, they cannot be degraded under high temperature also. These are the two categories of anti-nutritional factors. Now coming to the classification. So the anti-nutritional factors are the enzyme inhibitors, hemagglutinins, plant enzyme, cyanogenic glycosides, goitrogens, estrogens, saponins, gossypol, tannins, antivitamins, etc. Now we are going to see in detail about this classification. First one is the protease, uh, especially the trypsin and the amylase inhibitors, protease inhibitors and amylase inhibitors. The protease inhibitors that is, they prevent the activity of protease. Protease inhibitors, they prevent the activity or they inhibit the activity of the enzyme protease. And these protease inhibitors are mostly uh, found in seeds of cultivated legumes and cereals. These protein inhibitors have the ability to inhibit the activity of proteolytic enzymes within the gastrointestinal tract of animals. This is the activity of protease inhibitor. Then coming to trypsin inhibitor. Trypsin inhibitor and chymotrypsin inhibitor are, they are also protease inhibitors occurring in raw legume seeds. This protease inhibitors, that is the trypsin inhibitor, reduces the trypsin activity and to a lesser extent the activity of chymotrypsin also. Therefore, impairing protein digestion by monogastric animals and some young ruminant animals. What is the role of this trypsin inhibitor? That is trypsin inhibitor, the anti-nutritional factor trypsin inhibitor. They reduce the activity of trypsin and thus impairing protein digestion of some of the young ruminant animals and monogastric animals. And the word is amylase inhibitors. Amylase inhibitors are also known as starch blockers. That is, they prevent dietary starch being absorbed. These amylase inhibitors present in food as some anti-nutritional factor. They are known as starch blockers and they prevent the dietary starch being absorbed. That is, they prevent the absorption of dietary starch. Our next anti-nutritional factor is hemagglutinins. Or lectins. What are lectins? That is the proteins that can agglutinate red blood cells with non sugar specificity are referred to as lectins. If this, uh, this pro the proteins which agglutinate the red blood cells 
but the sugar specificity specificity is unknown means they are known as hem agglutinins these hem agglutinins or lectins are present in most of the cereals and bean what they do is they impair the nutrient absorption and cause damage that may allow infiltration of bacteria into the bloodstream that is these lectins impair the nutrient absorption and cause damage that may allow infiltration of bacteria into the bloodstream next one is saponins saponins are molecules form soap like forms when shaken with water that is these molecules when shaken with water they form foam like substances or as soapy substances actually these saponins are triterpene and steroid glycosides chemically these saponins are triterpene and steroid glycosides saponins were treated as toxic because they seemed to be extremely toxic to fish and cold blooded animals and many of them possess strong hemolytic activity due, due to the hemolytic activity the saponins are treated as toxic they have other health benefits also that is saponin rich foods are important in human diets to control plasma cholesterol preventing peptic ulcer osteoporosis and to reduce the risk of heart disease as an anti nutritional factor these we have hemolytic activity and they are extremely toxic to fish and cold blooded animals but Uh, it has uh, some health benefits also uh, on that aspect they are important in human diets to control um, cholesterol peptic ulcer then osteoporosis and they also reduce the risk of heart diseases next one is cyanogenic glycosides cyanogenic glycosides they are a hydroxy nitrile type a glycon and of a sugar moiety a glycon and a sugar moiety the sugar moiety mostly is d glucose a number of plant species produce hydrogen cyanide hcn from cyanogenic glycosides when they are consumed when these uh, some of the plant species are consumed by the animals they produce hydrogen cyanide from the cyanogenic glycosides um this glyc cyanogenic glycosides are activated by b glucoxidases to release toxic volatile hydrogen cyanide as well as ketones or aldehydes to fend off herbivore and pathogen attack the cyanogenic glycosides are activated by this b glucoxidases cassava is a crop plant which is rich in the cyanogenic glycosides they have the ability to form uh, hydrogen cyanide when they are consumed by the herbivores cassava is a crop plant which is rich in cyanogenic glycoside next one is oxalates some minerals along with oxalic acid forms oxalate the anti nutritive nature of oxalic acid is not affected by ruminants or it have only a, a minor significance in ruminants some of the minerals uh, um, ex, uh, for example magnesium iron and calcium salts are insoluble and they along with oxalic for oxalic acid forms mineral oxalates so these oxalates have a anti metal nature also and these oxalates cause irritation in guts of guts of animals next one is anti vitamins what do you mean by anti vitamin a substance that makes a vitamin ineffective that is antagonistic to vitamin a substance that makes a vitamin is ineffective is known as anti vitamins uh, some of the food products uh, may contain uh, this anti vitamin factor which is an anti nutritional factor example is avidin it's a heat sensitive compound 
found in the egg white and uh, it forms a complex with this avidin uh, forms a complex with the biotin protein that is biotin um, vitamin avidin is a heat sensitive compound found in egg white and forms a complex with biotin this this anti nutritional factor avidin can be uh, removed by boiling or cooking that is heat will degrade this anti vitamin then raw fish contains thiaminase which has anti vitamin properties that is it destroyed the vitamin thiamine thiaminase raw fish contains thiaminase which has the anti vitamin property which destroys the vitamin thiamine then mushroom may also contain vitamin b6 and the gunners this is about anti vitamins anti vitamins are the substances which makes vitamins ineffective next one is tannins tannins are known to be present in food food products and to inhibit the activities of trypsin chemotrypsin amylase lipase etc they also decrease the protein quality of foods and interfere with dietary iron absorption these tannins are large polyphenols they contain hydroxyl and other suitable groups to form strong complex with the proteins and other molecules thus they in tannins when form uh, complex bonds with the proteins mm, thus the they become uh, very difficult to for digestion the tannin prevents the digestion of proteins also when they form complexes then tannin and protein complex may be responsible for the anti nutritional effect of this tannin that is uh, this tannin Uh, causes the uh, uh, decrease the protein quality of food. They interfere with the dietary iron absorption. Um, they also inhibit the activities of trypsin, chymotrypsin, amylase, lipase, etc. Next one is a phytate. That is a salt form of phytic acid. It is also known as inositol hexaphosphate. And the salt of this mono and divalent cations, example potassium, magnesium, and calcium, uh, they accumulate in the seeds during the ripening period. That is, this phytate helps in the winter storage of the seeds. But coming to the conception, this will cause a problem. That is, it will cause the negative impact on the bioavailability of the divalent and the trivalent. Uh, min uh, divalent and bivalent minerals such as uh, zinc, iron, uh, manganese, uh, calcium, etc. The high level consumption of this uh, phytate phytic containing foods will result in mineral deficiency. Also, the cereal proteins uh, are a major predominant dietary factor, and um, the associated phytic intake is a cause of serious concern. and the phosphorus bound to phytate is not typically bioavailable to any animal that is non ruminant uh, which means the phosphorus bound to phytate is bioavailable to the ruminants because they double chew with the food once the food enters the first chamber of the stomach it, uh, some the, some of the enzymes acts on it and the phosphorus will be bioavailable to the ruminants but it is not in case of the non ruminants Some of the anti nutritional factors include anti enzymes. That is, zolanin is an anti enzyme present in potato. That is, when the potatoes are uh, shown to sunlight, some green color green color patches occurs in the potato. It is because of the presence of this anti enzyme zolanin, and it is uh, toxic to humans. Another anti hormones which include glucosinolates present in turnip, cabbage, soya bean, etc. They are also known as goitrogens as they cause goiter development. Then phytoestrogens. The phytoestrogens are isoflavanols, and they are examples of genistein, diacin. They are present in high amount in soya bean. 
most of the legumes contains an anti-nutritional factor oligosaccharide which includes stachyose and raffinose which can be reduced by germination and this is all about the anti-nutritional factors in food thank you for listening this video if you like this video give us a thumbs up please subscribe our channel share with your friends and leave your valuable comments for future improvement